Hello everyone and welcome back to NP Station. So today we are continuing with our Connect4 project in Python. By the end of this video we will be completing the entire program so make sure to follow along with me in typing the code throughout this video so you can create your own Connect4 game by the end. So without further ado let's just get right into it. Um, if you haven't watched the previous two videos make sure to do so so you can understand each line of code that we have written or if you want you can go ahead and use my github link in the description where I have the code for the project so you can copy and paste that if you have any errors from the previous two parts of this uh, project then also check my github uh, code that is there in the in the description so you can just compare your code with the github and um, if you do have any specific questions regarding the errors you're getting then please do reach out to me in the comment section and I'll try and answer them as best as I can so let's just go ahead and um, continue on with the project. So far what we've done is we've created our game board and the design for it. We have also um, used our uh, print game board function and we have basically just set up how it's going to look like. We've used this uh, modify array function as well. We've created a check for winner function, which sees uh, if there's any chip, either the red or the blue, is um, on the game board like four in a row. So if there is, and if it sees that, then it'll basically say who the winner is, and it'll end the game as well. We're checking for the vertical spaces, the diagonals, just to see if there's four in a row of the same color chip. So that's what all of these loops are doing. And then we have our coordinate parser method, which is uh, very critical for this project, which is we're going to use this coordinate parser method a lot in today's video with the functions we are creating and the main game loop. And of course, we have our is space available method as well, which is checking if the user that the space or sorry, if the space that the user has entered is available or not. And same goes with the computer. So what we need to do is implement um, another function in here and this function is going to be called gravity checker so for this game to work it is very crucial for the computer to understand how gravity works now of course right now it has no clue how to implement gravity into this game which is why we need to code that into the program so for connect 4 to work you choose a space on the game board and it needs to make sure that that chip that you're placing goes to the bottom most available space. So let's say you choose a space that is in the middle of the game board, like C3, right? If you choose that space and there is a space available beneath that, then the computer needs to return back saying that is not a valid space that you can enter, right? So it's going to use this is space available method and this gravity checker method that we're about to create. So the gravity is very um, important for us to implement into this game for this program to work. So let's go ahead and create that uh, method right now. So we'll say um, gravity checker and in here we are going to use our intended coordinate as a parameter. So what we need to first start off by doing is we want to check or calculate the space below. So let's go ahead and put in this uh, comment here just so we know what this code is doing. So let's create a variable called space below and we'll set it to none times two. And this is similar to what we did up here in the coordinate parser method as you can see on line 60. So we're doing the same thing and now we're going to use our space below variable at zero. So space below at zero is equal to intended coordinate at zero plus one. So this is checking for the row. Basically, when the user enters right a specific coordinate, we're going to take that row that they entered and add one. And then for the columns, the columns don't really matter. Uh, so we'll just set it equal to the same as of now. So it, um, we'll just say space below at one is equal to intended coordinate at one. So that's gonna calculate the space below. Now what we need to do is we need to check if the uh, coordinate is at ground level. So is the coordinate at ground level? So here let's go ahead and create this if condition and we'll have space below at zero is equal to six. 
So basically our game board has six rows. As you can see, we have defined that right here with our rows variable. So it has six rows. So we need to check if the space below at zero is equal to six, then we need to return true because that's a valid coordinate, right? So that's gonna be all for that if condition. And once you exit out of that, we need another uh, comment here. So what we want to do is check if there's a chip below. So here we also need an if condition and it's going to use our is space available method with our space below as the parameter and if this it's going to check if it's equal to false and if it is it'll return true. Now the reason that this is false and not true is because of the way we've coded our is a space available method. So basically if the space is available it's going to return false which is why we're checking if it equals to false, then we would have to return true. All right, so now let's exit out of that and we're just going to return false um, outside of those if conditions. Okay, so now that is actually all for our gravity checker method. So hopefully this method will help us implement the idea of gravity into this game so the Connect4 project will work as we want it to. Now, before we had ended by putting in this turn counter variable, I want to put in another uh, variable here called leave loop, and we'll just set this equal to false because we need to use this later on. So now that we're done with this gravity checker, our final step is to code the main game loop. So this is like the fun part. We've coded all of our functions and methods and these loops, right? So now we just need to implement those methods into the main game loop. So let's go ahead and start off by creating our while loop. And in here, we'll use that leave loop variable we just created and check if it um, will basically set it equal to false. So while leave loop is equal to false, we implement this if condition and we'll use our turn counter variable. So basically, if turn counter divided by, or you can you know say mod, mod two is equal to zero, then this means, so you can see here turn counter, we're setting it equal to zero. So if uh, our turn counter mod two is equal to zero, that just means it's the user's turn, so our turn. So what we wanna do is call our print game board method that we had before, which would just print that game board onto our console window. All right, so now we need another if condition, or sorry, while loop. So while true, and then we'll have our space picked variable. Here we're just gonna have this input. So this is what's going to be printed to the user. Make sure to put backslash n so it uh, looks neat and you know printed on the next line. We'll just say choose a space. So this is what the user is gonna be prompted to do as soon as they click their run button and that's where they're going to enter the coordinate that they want to put their chip in. So now we use a coordinate variable, and this will e be equal to our coordinate parser at space picked, just like that. And now what we actually want to use is a try except loop, so go ahead and put in this try keyword right there, and what we want to do here is check if the space is available. Now that might sound repeated to you as I've said it before because we have this uh, function and our gravity checker. So we've already basically implemented how we need to check if the space is available. So we'll use those methods here and um, in the if condition. So we'll say if space is available, right? We'll use our coordinate, not parser, coordinate and our gravity checker method as well with our coordinate that the user has entered in. So this is in an if condition. So if that um, is a valid coordinate, we're going to use our modify array and basically just pass in the coordinate with our blue chip since it is our turn. So the user is blue, so I'll just copy that and paste it here. Okay, so make sure um, you use this modify method, modify array method which we have used before. It might actually, I don't know if I said this before, but I changed this to modify array. I believe I had said modify turn before. So make sure to fix that on your um, in your code as well. But um, after that little change, let's continue. And here we'll just uh, break the program right there. Now, make sure to click enter and you're in the same indentation as your if condition. And here we need an else. So this is just gonna say print not a valid coordinate. 
So that print statement will be printed if the user enters a space that, let's say, is already taken um, by another chip. And then since this is a try accept, let's go ahead, click backspace into the same indentation as a try. Put in your accept here, and we need another print statement, which will say an error occurred. Um, like we can just say, please try again. So this accept will just handle if anything else went wrong, it'll just directly go here to the accept and print out the statement. So then the user can again try again with another uh, coordinate. Okay, so now we're done with that try accept. Click backspace so you're in the same indentation as the while loop. And once you're there, I wanna create these two variables, one called winner, actually just one variable. Winner um, is equal to check for winner. We'll use that method that we created with our blue chip in the check for winner. So it's basically using our winner variable and it's setting the winner as the blue chip, which is also the user. And then we need to increment the turn counter variable by one. So we'll just say plus equals one. All right, so this is all basically for if um, it's the user's turn. So let's go ahead and just put in a comment there. I can just say check if uh, this code is checking if the space is available, if the space is available. So now that we're done with this code, we need to write the code for when it's the computer's turn. So let's go ahead and click backspace to when you're in the same indentation as this first if condition we have in our while loop. And here we need our else. So here we're gonna have another while true and what we need to do, I'm actually going to go ahead and put in a comment right here to basically um, say that it's the computer's turn. All right, so now that we put in that comment, we can continue. Uh, I'm going to create a variable called CPU choice, and I'll set this equal to random.choice possible letters, which is our array that we created. And then we'll have random.randant 0, 0,5. So this line of code is creating a variable called CPU choice. And for the row, it is using this random.choice and picking a random letter out of all the possible letters it can choose from to you know choose the row um, it wants to place it in. And then we're also choosing the, uh, or using the random.randant to choose a random number between 0 and 5. So that is how the computer is going to choose which space it wants to enter the token in. And then we'll use our CPU uh, coordinate, another variable. I'm going to set this equal to the coordinate parser with our CPU choice variable that we just created as the parameter here. Now we need an if condition which checks is space available and we'll use our CPU coordinate and gravity checker, again, CPU coordinate. So in this if condition, again, we need to call that modify array and use our CPU coordinate with our red chip as it is the computer's turn and the red is the computer's color. Now you can go ahead and choose any emojis you would like as well for um, the tokens here. I just chose a blue and red token to keep it simple. Um, but yeah, now we need to break the program. So this is very similar to what we did above here for when it's the user's turn. We're just repeating it for the computer's turn. Now we need to click um, enter. Make sure you're in the same annotation as the while loop. Here we'll increment our turn counter by one. So plus equals one. And then we need our winner variable. And we are going to set the winner using the check for winner to the red token, which is the computer. All right, so that is all for this uh, while loop here. Actually, inside, we're not, we're not done yet. We need to create this tiny little if condition. So in the same indentation as the else statement, we need to create this little if statement that is basically going to check um, if there is a winner. So let's say that either the user or the computer won. That means there is a winner for the game. So it's gonna go to this if condition. It's going to print the game board by using that function and it's going to break the game. So it'll end it and the game will be over. So make sure to also put this if condition in your code as well. And we are done with our connect for project. 
Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. Okay, so look at that. It says, welcome to Connect 4 and it prints out our game board. So let's go ahead and choose a spot. I'll say D5 and you can see it prints out our token in that spot and the computer is also taking its turn. Now I'm going to say E5. Alright, so put a space there. C5. It went up and look, it let us win this round. So I'll say B5 and it should say that we won. You can see game over. Blue wins. Thank you for playing. So that is all for the Connect4 project. It works perfectly. If you guys enjoyed coding this program or this game, then please give this video a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions, again, please reach out to me and I'll try my best to answer your questions. And if you want the code, then the GitHub link is in the description. But make sure to share this video with your family and friends so they can create a Connect4 project as well. But that is all for today's video. Keep reading, keep coding, and stay safe.